Games are ranked by PlayScore, a standard rating that averages gamer reviews and critic reviews. Number 15 is Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Let's face it, Digimon games haven't been very active lately. Luckily for 2016, Bandai Namco decided to release a whole new entry to this long-running monster franchise. Players control a young hacker as they are transported to a digital world filled with menacing mystery. Fret not, for the players are given the ability to become a cyber sleuth, one that can stop this virtual threat and prevent mankind from doom. And of course, let's not forget about the game's core, Digimon. Its turn-based action and monster collecting is the best of the franchise. On top of this, the new Digivolution can change the tide of the battle. It's a fantastic addition to the game and it's the reason why most critics love it. It's the best Digimon game to date with a play score of an 8.52. In the 14th place is The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Edmund McMillan's creation gets a remake to Sony's prized handheld. Originally a Flash game, take this demented game for a spin and control Isaac, a poor, poor soul trapped in his mother's basement. It's a top-down shooter that uses tears as bullets. Gameplay evolves very fast with new things coming in every rune type. Its randomly generated dungeons and impressive monster variety is very challenging for new and even old players. The longer you descend into this maternal madness, the harder it becomes. And the permadeath can be very unforgiving as it restarts the entire game. Duh. This makes the roguelike experience unforgettable. Oh, one more thing, an even better version of this game will be released on the Nintendo Switch this coming March. It has a play score of an 8.54. 13th place is Child of Light. Inspired by the classic fairy tales of the old, guide Princess Aurora as she takes on a perilous quest to save her kingdom from the evil Black Queen. Reclaim your heir to the magical Lemurian throne, save the stolen sun, moon, and stars, one rhyme at a time. This game is just so beautiful, can I just say it? It's a wonderful hand-drawn adventure with elements mixed from classic side-scrollers and RPGs. Gather a group of memorable characters and face deadly creatures on your journey. Its active time battle system makes a good use of the game's neutral paced combat as you can only equip one party member at a time. Critics praised it for its gorgeous visuals and straightforward combat. Ubisoft has outdid themselves in this side-scrolling genre. It has a play score of an 8.56. And number 12 is Gravity Rush. Feel the potential of PS Vita's hardware features in this fun role-playing adventure game from SCE Japan Studio. Defy the laws of physics as you seamlessly control the flow of gravity in the entire game. Enter a dreamlike state in its vibrant world filled with monsters and cel-shaded visuals. The game uses Vita's touch and gyro controls very well. Players can maneuver the main character with ease, making the game's combat super fun. Cat is an adorable protagonist and is cited as one of the greatest aspects of the game in most critics' reviews. Just recently, its sequel has been released on the PlayStation 4. Gravity Rush has a play score of an 8.61 and it's one of PS Vita's iconic games. And rack number 11 is Muramasa Rebirth. A game born from the ashes of Nintendo Wii has found its way to the PS Vita. This side-scrolling JRPG embraces the notion of choices. Now players will be picking between two playable characters, each with different paths and endings. Though the similarities of the journeys are obvious, the game changes and it adds layers of new plot moments. Vanillaware does not hold back when it comes to remakes. The combat in this game is greatly improved, making it more fluid and convenient on the small console. Critics love the game's slick and stylish atmosphere, the soundtrack, and the main game's twists and turns. It's considered as one of PS Vita's prettiest looking games, a play score of an 8.63. In the 10th place is Rogue Legacy. It's a 2D platformer with an incredibly absurd gameplay element. It's Descendant System. Now the player's quest to find the main character's ancient secret comes with the price of multiple heirs to carry the burden of the sword. As the player dies, the game randomly generates a new character but with unique traits for better or for worse. Sometimes it's color blindedness, dwarfism, and so much more. But, but you know, there's beauty in uncertainty. Developer Cellar Door Games made an incredibly fun platformer that oozes of nostalgia to the days of the old. It has a rewarding progression system, fun boss battles, and it's incredibly challenging. Keep going because your legacy does not end there. It receives a play score of an 8.64. And number 9 is Soul Sacrifice Delta. 
From the developer that brought us Mighty Number no. 9, there was a game that took the word sacrifice way too seriously, but all for the good reasons. This third-person co-op game shares the same combat of the God Eater and Monster Hunter series. Players team up to fight a large number of beasts and monsters to complete contracts. The game's main feature comes from the ability to sacrifice their body parts to create devastating damage to the enemies. Just uh, make sure it's worth something. In co-op, it gets increasingly fun as you're faced with the choice of who or what to sacrifice depending on the danger you're facing. This is an expanded version of the original Soul Sacrifice game that came out during 2013. The graphics and the enemy AI have been greatly improved, making it more difficult even for the experienced players. It has a play score of an 8.64. Act 8 is this day of 4, A Promise Revisited. Originally a PlayStation 3 title, this was the PS Vita version of A Promise Unforgotten. Revisit the Netherworld in Nipponichi's fame series. It shares all the content of the PS3 release including DLCs, but there are also tons of new features added including new characters and whole new stories. Aside from that, its iconic tactical turn-based combat is greatly improved. Players now face deadly monsters that go bigger and badder. But don't worry, the level cap is now at 9999. That's a ton of damage. Also, the game's humor never goes out of hand. It's what made this game amazing in the first place. It has a play score of an 8.70. In the seventh place, E's Memories of Celsetto. Since 1987, the E series was one of the pioneers of classic JRPG. Ever since, it grew and grew to become an empire of sequels upon sequels. Its iconic character, Adol the Red Kristen, will always be remembered as the game's poster boy. Fans of the series are pleased with PS Vita's memories of Celsetto. Adol suffers from a sudden amnesia and players must help him recollect them at all costs. In the East universe, players will encounter old and new characters from the series. This makes for a nostalgic trip, one that longtime fans appreciate and a memorable adventure for those new to the series. Combat remains the same, the real-time RPG elements make good use of the PS Vita's controls, the variety of slashes, strikes, and pierces remain pivotal to progression, and the addition of special attacks make the game more badass. I miss this game, it gets a play score of an 8.70. Number 6 is Dragon's Crown. This is a game that really portrays RPG in a nutshell. Vanillaware does it again. It's set in the same world as Odin's Sphere and Grim Grimoire. Gather a ragtag group of stereotypical fantasy characters in a quest to reach the end of a terrorizing dungeon filled with bloodthirsty beasts. The studio adventure may look easy at first, but the game knows when to seriously get difficult. Dominate its labyrinth architectures with the AI-controlled characters or with real players. Choose from its six distinct heroes and unique abilities. It's not just the brutal combat that's worth falling for. Players love the art style and the simplicity of the gameplay. It has a play score of an 8.74. Fifth in this ranking is Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster. Well, looks like Square Enix decided to give players one more chance to spend time with one of the greatest video game relationships ever. This glorious remaster of the series' 10th entry gives light to new content, redefined soundtrack, and cleaner visuals. Both Titus and Eunice adventures are in this game. For the price of one, players can get both Final Fantasy X games. Fans will be delighted to see the return of their favorite characters into the PS Vita small screen, while new players might see this as an emotional roller coaster. It's one of the finest Final Fantasy games of all time, and it has a play score of an 8.84. Fourth is Darkest Dungeon. This dungeon crawling game doesn't only test the player's wits, but also his mental fortitude. Survive a grueling adventure in a dark dungeon filled with evil, danger, and stress. Gameplay stems from a simple real-time and turn-based combat. It gained widespread praises upon release as it introduces a unique gameplay mechanic called the Affliction System. This system heavily affects the pacing. As the player spirals deeper into the dungeon, his character will slowly lose his sanity. They'll slowly descend into madness from the stress of battle, the chaos of death, and just the ominous darkness. This game is clearly loved by many. It has won numerous awards and proved to be a contender on most Game of the Year awards. Oh, and the game has additional DLCs on its way, so make sure to pick that up too. It has a play score of an 8.85. In number 3 is Dragon Quest Builders. 
It's hard not to associate this game to Minecraft as it shares the same uh, elements from block building, development, and atmosphere. What makes this game different though is that it's part of the Dragon Quest universe and that's a good thing. You will be controlling a savior tasked to rebuild the world from scratch after it was destroyed. It runs parallel to the ending of the original Dragon Quest. Players will be met with Dragon Quest's lore along the way while collecting voxel-based objects. The game's distinct focus on the role-playing makes it even more different to, let's say, Minecraft and Terraria. It's a Square Enix product that nurtures the growth of your character in exciting ways. To play this on the PS Vita is a worthwhile experience and it receives a play score of an 8.87. Second is Odin Spear Lifter Seer. We mentioned this in our previous videos before, that Vanillaware keeps on dropping good games like crazy. If video games deserve a good remake and a remaster, then better contact these guys to satisfy your wishes. This remake of the classic PlayStation 2 game is filled with Norse lore, magic, and beautiful, gorgeous art style. It's a perfect remake considering it actually fixes some of the original's problems. From the side-scrolling gameplay to the user interface, what makes this game more appealing is its multiple perspectives. Play different characters with their own stories to tell. At the end of their chapters, these stories weave together into a unifying ending. It's one of the better remakes on the PS Vita and it recently won our award for being the best PS Vita game of 2016. It has a play score of 9.06. And here are the runners up before we reveal the number one. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. The second deal from Nihon Falcom's acclaimed franchise brings forth a whole new roster of heroes, tactical link system, and a very intriguing story. A play score of an 8.47. Grand Kingdom A turn battle that makes you a tactician in a matter of hours. Set in a world where kingdoms are vying for dominance, plan your armies right, and be the real master of war. It has a play score of an 8.45. World of Final Fantasy your favorite Final Fantasy characters have been typified in a grand adventure full of magic, darkness, and crystals. And of course, Chocobos! It receives a play score of an 8.38. Atelier Ayesha Plus, The Alchemist of Dusk. The 14th main title of the Atelier series, find your missing sister in a game with the right concoction of alchemy and a deep RPG mechanic. A play score of 8.37. Unepic. A Metroidvania game that puts players in the life of an average guy as he slowly goes on a delirious descent to madness. It gets a play score of an 8.23. You can get these games by clicking the first link in the description box below. And the best role-playing game on the PS Vita is Persona 4 Golden. Everyone knows how much we love the Persona series, and we can't wait for Persona 5! Now we are happy to tell you that Atlas's fourth main entry to the Persona franchise makes a fantastic leap to portable gaming. We've had a good dose of it since Persona 3 Portable, but boy did P4G deliver! Everything from the PlayStation 2 Classic is found in your nifty handheld console. Enjoy the beauty of high school, listen to awesome jazzy music, socialize with friends, and eliminate evil shadows in television channels in its crazy murder mystery story. The game remains the same but with extra challenge modes, new music, and serious boss fights that will test your persona strengths. It has a play score of a 9.33. Pretty please, help us grow the What to Play community by translating your favorite What to Play videos to your local language. Click the More button below and select Add Translations. Thank you! We publish 4 gaming videos every week so don't miss any of them. Click that bell button beside subscribe, check the send me box, and save. Don't forget to like and share this video to your friends. To receive the latest player and gaming updates, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Google+.